I know you've been waiting for this video for nearly a month, but it's finally here. Attic Season 14 Ultimate Maokai Support Guide. In this video, I'll be providing a ton of information on how I think Maokai Support is best played for Season 14. I'll be going over the best items, runes, and gameplay tips in this Maokai Support Guide. If you don't already know, Maokai is the number one tank support champion across all elos. He's an absolute beast of a champion whether you are a beginner or a veteran League of Legends support player. Maokai is a jack of all trades type of champion with tremendous engage potential, incredible peeling, and insane map control. I'm not sure how accurate my YouTube analytics are, but if they are true, it's clear that a lot of you viewers are on the older side and are potentially looking for a champion that is a bit easier to play mechanically, but still allows for high cerebral levels of play. Playing Maokai allows you to more heavily focus on the strategic portion of the game involving timely rotations, teamfight positioning, and fundamental vision control. Therefore, if that's the type of support champion you're looking to play, you've come to the right place, because I am certain that by watching this Maokai support guide, you will gain the exact tools you need to dominate your next solo queue game. Whatever your rank goal is, I guarantee you will reach them if you truly grasp the concepts I'm about to share with you. But before we jump into Maokai's optimal items and runes, I do want to mention my previous flagship video, How to Climb Infinite LP with Maokai Support, is still very relevant. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'd highly recommend clicking on it afterwards to get a more complete picture of how to play Maokai Support. In that video, you will learn a lot of key fundamentals for this champion and role where I review gameplay concepts for Maokai Support, starting from around 12 minutes. Now, let's talk about Maokai's best build path. Maokai has a variety of build paths he can build towards, but in this video guide, I'll be focusing on what I consider his most optimal build path. I understand there are AP Emax builds on Maokai that are viable, but this guide will assume you want to play him using a more typical Aftershock tanky build. In Season 14, all support players will purchase World Atlas and two pots, regardless if you are melee or ranged. Maokai will primarily stack this support item by executing minions below 50% max health, but occasionally you can also get an extra boost of gold if one of your saplings damage the opposing player. Once the second wave arrives, you can start executing the first two melee minions of the wave to try and reach your level 2 power spike as soon as possible. Try to position yourself for an engage angle early on so that as soon as you hit level 2, you can go for a WQ all in against the enemy carry. I've won countless games off of a flash WQ at level 2 simply due to a basic understanding of this level 2 power spike. The new World Atlas support item feels great on Maokai, not only due to the increase in gold generation, but the fact that it provides both base mana regeneration and health regeneration. In past seasons, Maokai would often have to go Relic Shield, meaning he missed out on crucial mana regeneration. But now, with that extra mana in lane, I don't feel that I ever need to bring a mana related rune such as Biscuits. I can safely use my saplings and bushes while still having enough mana to fight in early skirmishes. While you stack your support item, I almost always make sure my first purchase includes a Boots of Speed. Movement speed is crucial on Maokai support, and one of your early goals is to transform them into tier 2 boots as soon as you can. If I'm against a tough all-in matchup, I will delay my tier 2 boots and purchase a ruby crystal for a bit of extra health before continuing to build my tier 2 boots. On the off chance you don't have a good purchase and are still relatively healthy, but your ADC had to back for some reason, you can consider going for a quick early roam mid and look for a gank opportunity. This allows you to provide a bit of pressure in mid lane preventing any jungler gank, or you can find an overextended mid laner and gank them yourself. Just make sure to return to the bot lane as soon as your ADC has returned to lane to continue the 2v2. Once you have enough gold to upgrade to tier 2 boots, I most frequently purchase Boots of Swiftness, also known as Swifties. These boots allow Maokai to rotate between lanes extremely fast, while also being able to pressure lane more effectively since you will be able to dodge abilities while positioning aggressively. If you do decide to build Boots of Swiftness, you should understand that this is a win more type of game, since they can be trickier to use if your team is falling behind too quickly in the early game. Being able to race across the map feels very strong, as it is nearly impossible to outrun a Maokai support or his saplings. However, once you catch up to the enemy, you have sacrificed the option of having either additional tankiness or cooldown reduction, so make sure you have a teammate nearby to help finish off the enemy. Alternatively, if you don't think you will be running down enemy champions and think this will be more of a peel game, Lucidity Boots could be the better choice. 
Although movement speed is the most valuable stat on Maokai, cooldown reduction is a close second. Against team compositions who want to constantly dive your backline, you want to always have the option of disengaging as frequently as possible. Having just one extra W or Q to peel for your backline carry will be an important part of your win condition. There will be of course also scenarios where the enemy team has a very specific team comp where either steel caps or merc treads would be more suitable. You want to buy steel caps versus teams with at least 2-3 to three auto attackers, not necessarily 80 teams, and you want to buy merc treads versus long CC duration comps, not necessarily AP teams. Remember that these tier 2 boots are more expensive and it will delay your overall build path a little bit, so really think critically if buying these boots are part of your win condition as Maokai support. As you continue to get stacks on your support item, World Atlas will transform into Runic Compass, which will then transform into Bounty of Worlds, providing you access to not only wards, but also 5 possible upgrades. In this Maokai support guide, we are only going to discuss 3 of the 5 upgrades, as highlighted on the screen here. The support transformation that I select most often and is my most recommended is Solstice Slay. This transformation causes you and the nearest most wounded ally to heal 120 health and gain 90 bonus movement speed for 4 seconds each time you slow or immobilize a champion. I'll be repeating this opinion of mine many times throughout this video, but movement speed is king on Maokai support. It helps you maneuver in teamfights a lot more easily so that rooting enemies and proccing your passive will be of no trouble. I'm still really surprised that this 90 movement speed buff lasts 4 seconds, allowing you to easily stick onto targets who are trying to escape and helps your carry reposition in teamfights. Since Maokai can slow enemies from across the map with a random sapling, you will want to keep a close eye on when Solstice Slay's passive is procced. The 20 second cooldown goes by fairly quickly and you can think of Solstice Slay as a mini heal summoner spell for both you and your carry. The next support transformation I want to cover for Maokai support is Celestial Opposition. This is probably your more typical choice for tank supports since it essentially acts as an additional aftershock for when you decide to engage. Upon taking damage, Maokai gets a significant damage reduction of 35%, and once the shield is popped, you will slow nearby enemies for 1.5 seconds, helping you stick to your intended target. Celestial Opposition is an amazing upgrade to choose if you feel that you are the primary engage on Maokai support. In some team compositions, you may end up being the only tank, meaning the utility from Solstice Slay will be the less optimal purchase, while Celestial Opposition will allow you to absorb as much damage as possible. As long as your Blessing of the Mountain passive is available, you will feel super protected and should have no doubts onto diving the enemy's carries. However, the biggest drawback with Celestial Opposition is that its 20 second cooldown effect only refreshes once the user has been out of combat. This means you can really only proc this item's passive once per teamfight. I'd avoid buying this item against comps that have a lot of easy to land poke in the mid game since the shield on Celestial Opposition can be broken even with just 1 HP of damage. Alternatively, if you have purchased Solstice Light earlier and want an item that scales well in late game teamfights, you can always sell your support item and repurchase Bounty of Worlds to transform it into Celestial Opposition for a total net cost of 240 gold. A 35% damage reduction makes you a super tank in the late game, where one final teamfight can be the difference between victory or defeat. Lastly, I want to talk about the support quest called Bloodsong. Solstice Slay is still my favorite support quest, but after discussing support quest options with other high elo support mains, Bloodsong can still be an amazing quest to build for. This support upgrade acts similarly to the recently removed Even Shroud, which used to give a 7% damage buff upon CC. Bloodsong on the other hand only applies this damage amplification if you are able to cast an ability, then land an auto attack on the intended target. Even after the slight nerf from 12 to 10% for melee supports, the damage amplification can really help snowball your fed carry such that no enemy can match their damage output. If you are confident that you will be able to land an auto attack after each of Maokai's W, Bloodsong is a very rewarding choice. On the other hand, if you don't think you can land your auto attacks due to superior enemy disengage, Maokai will have a lot of difficulty using Bloodsong's passive. This weakness is further exacerbated in matchups with heavy range differences, 
So if you're unsure of whether you can proc your Spellblade passive to apply the damage amplification, the safer choice is simply to choose Solstice Light instead for the additional utility in the form of healing and movement speed buffs. Essentially, the question you want to ask yourself is, do you want more team damage or more team survivability? Choose wisely. With the removal of mythic items in Season 14, item purchase choice is a lot more flexible and is really dependent on the enemy team composition. In League of Legends, the general idea that persists is that you want to focus on building items against whatever the enemy's team win condition is and or build towards whatever your team's win condition is. Having said that, let's first start building our core item set with the following template. I'll review each item in detail so that you truly understand the reasoning behind each purchase as opposed to blindly following a build path. It's very important to understand the why for each legendary item so that you can adjust your build on the fly based on the different game states that you will encounter. In Season 14, Riot introduced this new support item called Trailblazer and as a Maokai support main, I love this item. Movement speed is king on Maokai support and thus having a cheap tanky movement speed item for a low cost of 2500 gold makes Trailblazer a great first item to buy. You can think of this item like a support version of Deadman's Plate. Trailblazer's passive lead the way grants you an additional 20 bonus movement speed by traversing the map. Once you reach 100 stacks, you will leave a small path behind you that grants allies 15% of your bonus movement speed. To discharge these stacks, you can basic attack an enemy champion, causing them to be slowed for one second. The verdict on whether Void Grubs is a must contest objective is still up to debate, but in my opinion, roaming topside is usually worth your while. Maokai makes securing this new objective a breeze, and getting 5 Void Grubs makes your pushing power that much stronger for the rest of the game. Roaming is easy on Maokai with the purchase of an early winged moonplate, along with a pair of tier 2 boots. A first item trailblazer means you and an ally will become a strong duo in the mid game, making it even easier to contest for vision or assist quickly in teamfights. The only time I would consider skipping trailblazer is if the enemy is constantly diving you, which would mean you won't necessarily need the extra movement speed. In these type of rare games, your mindset should turn into becoming a peel bot for your carry, where you want to purchase more cooldown reduction to constantly use your abilities to help your backline survive. Overall, Trailblazer will be your core item for Maokai support that you will want to purchase in most games. The next few legendary items I want to review will be situational based on the given game state. You will want to think about which of your teammates are fed and thus who you want to play around, and you will also want to think about what are the enemy's win conditions and how we can best deny them. The next common legendary item that I would recommend is Knight's Vow. It provides Maokai with a significant health pool and helps spike his build path as one of the cheapest legendary tank items in the game. In such a burst heavy meta for Season 14, any type of redirection of damage from your carry to you is key to winning the game. Identify who on your team will be outputting maximum damage while requiring the most protection from being burst immediately. As long as your worthy ally keeps outputting damage, you'll heal 10% of the damage they continually output. If, on the off chance, there is no one truly worthy to link up to, you will want to buy legendary items specifically that go against the enemy team composition's win conditions. Against teams where there is a heavy 80 damage profile, your primary item choice will be Frozen Heart. This item's base stats and cost for Season 14 got slightly scaled down, but the passive remains the same. The crippling passive, which reduces nearby enemy attack speed by 20%, provides insane value against teams that rely on auto attacks to deal damage, all for a low combined cost of only 500 gold. This makes Frozen Heart one of the most cost efficient armor items while providing Maokai support with both mana and ability haste. Against AP teams, my go to item this season has actually been a slightly more expensive item called Kanic Rookern. Although it is a bit more costly than your usual support item, it is probably the best magic resistance item in the game for Maokai support. I absolutely love the fact that it gives Maokai extra health regeneration since it's not always possible for Maokai to sustain through poke in mid to late game teamfights from only his passive. The extra shield to protect him from AP damage makes it much easier for him to also be the risk taker and traverse through the jungle as a frontline scouter. I'm still super surprised that this item's passive refreshes every 12 seconds, making it very difficult for the enemy to whittle you down. 
Absorbing damage is a key component to being a good tank support player, and this item provides exactly what Maokai needs. In many games, however, you won't necessarily have the choice of building just armor or just magic resist, since the enemy team might have a mix of damage profiles that are part of their win condition. In Season 14, there are only two legendary items that contain mixed resistances. The more common mixed resistance tank support item you will buy is Locket of the Iron Solari. Unfortunately, this item has lost its old mythic passive, meaning it is a bit weaker, but its active is still a useful anti-burst tool. I generally like to buy Locket versus AoE heavy champions such as Katarina, Karthus, or Samira. If you want to play a bit greedier, you can instead purchase Jackshow the Protean. This item is a bit experimental to put in a support build path, but I honestly think there's a lot of value in it if you need a late game item to become a tank god. It is definitely more on the expensive side compared to Locket, but it scales well as long as you have a sizable health pool to take advantage of the massive resistances Jackshow provides. It won't be as useful versus true damage carries, but as long as you can last in teamfights for a total of 5 seconds, your resistances will prove to be extremely difficult for the enemy to deal with. I'd consider Jackshow to be your premium legendary item to build instead of Locket of the Iron Solari. In rare games where there's only one truly fed member on the enemy team, you can consider purchasing Anithema's Chains. To reiterate, I would only buy this item if the enemy's win condition clearly revolves around a single champion. You will not only take 30% reduced damage from the primary villain, but it will also reduce their tenacity by 20% every time you apply CC near them. By eliminating the enemy's only win condition, you can quickly secure the victory. Healing remains a significant mechanic in Season 14, and in games where the amount of healing starts to feel overwhelming, make sure to purchase either Bramble Vest or Oblivion Orb to apply Grievous Wounds. Bramble Vest is my preferred choice to reduce enemy healing since it will also provide Maokai with a decent amount of armor. If the enemy's healing is not often procced from auto attacks, then purchasing Oblivion Orb is also a valid option. You won't be as tanky compared to buying a Bramble Vest, but Maokai can apply Grievous Wounds a bit easier through either Saplings or his ultimate. You won't need to convert these epic items into their full legendary status since their unique passive is what's most important. Spending 800 gold to deny significant healing is already a sizable investment that will delay the rest of your build path. Only purchase one of these two items if anti-heal is truly required. Lastly, you will want to round off your item build path with Vigilant Wardstone once you are level 13 and have nearly 5 completed items. Both the precursor item Watchful Wardstone and Vigilant Wardstone itself is around 120% gold efficient, providing an insane amount of tanky stats for Maokai support. The support role is defined by trying to make the most out of your limited gold income, making Vigilant Wardstone a perfect last item. The primary purpose of this item is not just to be gold efficient, but it also allows you to maintain superior vision control in the late game. Having multiple pink wards in your inventory helps you also detect stealthed or camouflaged champions. Enemy champions such as Evelyn, Rengar, or Twitch will have a much more difficult time to flank unsuspectingly if everything is warded prior to a teamfight. Combining Vigilant Wardstone with your Everlasting Saplings provides your team with complete map and vision control, allowing you to most effectively win your game. I would like to point out that items reviewed in this video guide is not an exhaustive list, as there are other build paths that are viable on Maokai support. If you want additional in-depth information on my perspective on how to play Maokai support, you can always visit my Season 14 Ultimate Maokai support Google Doc with a link in the description box below. In that guide, you will find everything you will possibly need to know on how to play Maokai support, where I talk about alternative build options, in-depth ability analysis, gameplay scenarios, bot lane synergies and counters, and much, much more. Best of all, it's absolutely free to read and will be continually updated for each patch as the meta evolves. Now, let's talk about Maokai support's different rune pages. Overall, his runes remain relatively the same as previous seasons, but the most recent patch of 14.2 has definitely spiced things up. Although Maokai has a variety of rune choices to run in the top and jungle position, for support, you will specifically want to run Aftershock as your primary rune choice. Aftershock provides you with extra tankiness when you choose to engage. The additional tankiness lasts 2.5 seconds, providing you with an insane amount of stats of 35 armor plus 35 magic resist. This doesn't even take into consideration the bonus 80% armor and magic resist you will build throughout the game. 
As an engaged support, it is often your job to absorb as much damage as possible and buy enough time for your carries to DPS the enemy team. The Aftershock Keystone rune page that I most prefer using includes the following setup. Font of Life, Second Wind, and Overgrowth. Font of Life should be the only rune you take from the second row of the Resolve Tree as Shield Bash is pretty much useless on Maokai. Your allies will be able to heal around 30 HP per auto in mid to late game teamfights each time you immobilize an enemy champion. The third row of the Resolve Tree is where there can be some variety in choice. Bone Plating is an early game rune which helps protect you from all ins from an enemy support. The downside of this rune choice is that it can be easily procced in lane and has a high cooldown. I generally only take this versus all in supports such as Nautilus, Rel, or Leona. Second Wind is a rune choice you will want to take versus early poke supports. Maokai's threat range is pretty small, so it is extremely easy for enemy supports to harass him in lane from a safe distance. In order to sustain through Maokai's weak laning phase, Second Wind provides a lot of value if you think you will be poked out every 10 seconds. If you find you are facing against an AP mage support such as Zyra, Falcoz, or Zerath, Second Wind is a great choice to pick. Conditioning is a rune choice that scales well into the late game. With the removal of resistance stat shards in patch 14.2, this rune can be a nice alternative to make up for the slight loss of tankiness. Conditioning only activates after 12 minutes, so you will be generally weaker in the early game, but it is a worthy investment if you are not punished by the enemy bot duo. I generally take this rune if I feel that the enemy support won't be all inning me and does not have too much poke in the early game. Furthermore, if it turns out the 2v2 matchup in the bot lane is geared towards primarily roaming, this rune can be worth significant value since the other two rune choices in this row are more for laning purposes. In patch 14.2, Unflinching has received a major change, and although it used to be the default rune for Maokai support, it is now pretty useless. The measly 2-10 armor and magic resist, which only activates when you are immobilized, is just not worth taking. Instead, you will want to now opt for the rune choice Overgrowth, which gives you a substantial increase in HP later in the game. Regarding the secondary tree, in my previous video guides, I only focused on one secondary tree, but I have more recently been allowing myself to be a little bit more thoughtful. I have three secondary rune pages that I cycle through based on my lane matchup. The most common secondary tree I take is the Inspiration Tree. Hextech Flash Traption, or Hex Flash, is something I take quite often since it increases the threat range of my Twisted Advance. Without Flash, the enemy support will know my threat range is very small, so Hex Flash provides my carry with additional room to farm in lane. To use Hex Flash most effectively, I wait in a bush just outside of vision of the enemy laner and hold the Flash key until I'm ready to surprise engage on an unprepared and mispositioned enemy. Simply having the threat of being able to engage on an enemy applies a significant amount of pressure on the enemy team. Bringing this rune is also super comforting, knowing that if I do burn my red dwarf flash, it won't be a devastating cooldown since I can still hex flash every 15 to 20 seconds. I almost always take this rune against ranged supports. In Season 14, World Atlas now provides a very healthy amount of mana regeneration, meaning you don't really need the sustain from Biscuits. Biscuits are primarily a mana related rune, despite also giving you health, but I have found no mana issues since the introduction of this new support item. After the nerf to Time Warp Tonic, where it now only gives 2% bonus movement speed, I also don't think it's really worth taking. Cosmic Insight is a more reliable option as it provides you with faster summoner spell cycling as well as reduced item haste for things like Locket of the Iron Solari or Zeke's Convergence, as well as your support quest passives cooldown such as Celestial Opposition or Solstice Slay. The next most common secondary tree I take is the Domination Tree, where I specifically target the Relentless Hunter rune. As I've mentioned numerous times in my guides, movement speed is king for Maokai support, and having that extra movement speed on a roaming support like Maokai is crucial. If I don't need access to Hex Flash for lanes where there isn't a ranged support, I now tend to take the Domination Tree instead. Against tanky melee supports, I no longer need the threat of Hex Flash. There's no point in flashing forward against a Leona or Nautilus support if they will be flashing onto me instead. Therefore, I've really enjoyed taking Relentless Hunter in these tank vs tank matchups since this will also allow me to potentially outroam the enemy support. The same concept applies when I'm playing against other super heavy roam supports like Bard or Pike, where I don't have the abilities to quickly roam around the map as easily. 
Keeping up with realms as a support is a crucial aspect in maintaining pressure as a support. The other most useful rune you can take a Mecha support from the Domination Tree is Zombie Ward, allowing for even better map control in addition to your saplings. Since the removal of up to 25% tenacity from the Inflinching Rune, you may want to set up your secondary rune page to the Precision Tree. This is purely to gain access to the Legend Tenacity Rune to help you regain that lost tenacity. You should be able to fully stack this item by 14 minutes into the game, granting you a total of 20% tenacity. This will be the rune tree I take if I especially need tenacity versus long duration CC comps like Morgana, Ash, or Braum. The only other rune that you can take on Maokai support from the precision tree is Triumph, which grants you significantly more sustain during teamfights after each takedown. In patch 14.2, a major update to the rune stat shards was introduced. There will no longer be any armor or magic resist stat shards, but they are instead replaced with stat shards that involve movement speed, tenacity, and health. For the offensive or top row, I personally like taking the cooldown reduction rune stat. CDR is a very important stat to take on Maokai as it allows for easier cycling of abilities, allowing Maokai to more easily peel for his important carries. For the flex or middle row, there is one rune stat shard that's catching my eye. As we all know, Movement speed is the most OP stat in the game, especially on Maokai support, so anytime you see free moving speed, we insta-click it without thinking. It's very hard to continually increase your movement speed, compared to if you really need more health, you can just buy a ruby crystal. Simply having free early access to movement speed is an absolute game changer for Maokai support. This rune stat shard is most likely the reason why Maokai support is having an insane win rate in patch 14.2. Lastly, for the defensive or last row, I generally choose between the flat 65 HP rune and the 10% tenacity rune. Overall, I do feel the flat 65 HP rune is stronger in the early game since it basically makes up for the loss resistance stat shards. However, against lanes with significant CC abilities, you may want to take the 10% tenacity since any bit of extra health will not matter if Maokai is permanently slowed. In some matchups, you will need to take the Tenacity stat shard to help alleviate any extra obstacle Maokai would endure to reach his intended target. Now that you have the best items and runes for Maokai support, let me share some important tips and tricks on how to best use his abilities in Season 14. If you have absolutely no idea what Maokai's abilities even do, then I'd highly suggest watching my Maokai Abilities Guide video where I provide a very comprehensive breakdown of each of his abilities and how to use them most effectively. Your bread and butter Q ability, Bramble Smash, is what you will want to max first. As a support player, there are two main uses for this ability, which is either to provide additional damage or act as a disengage peel tool. In most cases, your Q will simply be a follow-up tool for your basic combo when you WQ onto an enemy. However, against engage or dive comps, you may want to consider saving your Q to help knock off incoming bruisers or assassins. In the laning phase, Bramble Smash can be a great tool to actually separate the enemy ADC and support so that you and your duo can better focus one enemy at a time. It can also be used to cancel dashes from incoming ganks or engages such as Jargon Flag and Drag or Shin Zhao's Audacious Charge, if timed correctly. Although it might seem trivial, the direction you cast Bramble Smash is an important mechanic. For example, you want to actually aim your Q against enemies into your allies crowd control. It can be very tilting for your allies if you end up knocking enemies away from their CC abilities. Alternatively, you may want to use your Q to direct the enemy away from your carry if they need additional space to safely output damage. The next ability you will want to max is W, called Twisted Advance. Although this ability is a targeted route, it can be difficult to land since its range is so small. In lower elos, squishy supports and ADCs often don't respect your short range, so finding an engage opportunity shouldn't be too difficult. Once you start climbing to higher elos, this lack of range will start to become a bit more difficult to play around, especially against poke lanes. This is why movement speed is such a critical stat on Maokai since it really is the only way for you to catch up with an enemy unit before rooting them. My major tip here is to bring Hex Flash against ranged supports, so that it will extend your threat range when trying to engage. There will exist a fine balance between conserving your health to not get poked out while playing aggressively to threaten an all-in with a flash W. 
there will be some engages that don't work out, but don't worry, because eventually you will start to see pick opportunities like never before. Maokai's E ability, Sapling Toss, is your last basic ability to upgrade, but it's still a very important one since it provides your team with an incredible amount of map control. Although it is relatively easy to use Sapling Toss in a game, there are many key spots you can throw your saplings to advance vision or secure map control most effectively. In Season 14, Maokai's support is extremely strong since you can maintain vision control of all three bot bushes even if you don't have an available ward to protect you from jungle ganks. You can extend your vision range further than a typical support since your e-sapling range is further than your ward range. When securing dragons and the baron, as long as you keep spamming your saplings in surrounding bushes, it puts immense pressure on the enemy from advancing further, thus preventing the chance of an objective steal. And lastly, the most important tip I want you to remember is to use saplings in an unwarded bush before walking into fog of war. Being able to advance vision safely makes Maokai support very, very useful. Don't be greedy and walk blindly. Simply waiting a few extra seconds for your E cooldown to refresh is a major advantage you want to be abusing. Maokai's ultimate ability, Nature's Grasp, is an amazing tool to catch enemies from escaping an ensuing teamfight. You generally want to cast this ultimate from Fog of War such that by the time your ultimate reaches the teamfight, the enemy will either have to scatter, which ruins their teamfight positioning, or, more ideally, they will be rooted for 2.5 seconds based on the travel distance of your roots. As long as the ultimate has had at least 2 seconds to travel, the speed of Maokai's branches will be over 700 ms, making it extremely difficult to disengage from. Look to trap enemies against terrain such as choke points or impassable walls. One neat tip about Maokai's ultimate is that its width is extremely large, meaning you can actually instantly root targets by casting the root at a 90 degree angle. Although the root duration won't be as long, it should still give you enough time to follow up with a sapling plus a WQ combo. Lastly, I want to briefly talk about team fighting for Maokai support. As a tank support, make sure that for every damage you are absorbing, your carries are able to output similar or ideally even more damage to the enemy team. It's okay to take damage if your carry is also outputting damage. You can position a bit more aggressively when your spells are up and a bit more defensively during the few seconds your spells are on cooldown. Although Maokai is a tank support, do remember that he is strong not because he is inherently tanky, but that he can sustain through long teamfights. You don't really want to engage on four enemies alone when your teammates are not around you because you can easily get bursted. Use your ultimate to catch a few individuals off guard while your teammates can kill off the rooted enemies. Your ultimate can be a great zoning tool that helps create number advantages against the enemy team. Once you've done your job as the engager, Think about which carries need to be peeled and try to protect them for as long as possible. Understanding when it is your job to go from an engage mindset to a peel bot mindset as a Maokai support is crucial for winning teamfights. If you need to save your route for incoming bruisers or assassins, stick near your ADC to make their job of outputting damage a lot easier. Avoid wasting your route on low damage tanks as you can simply use your body to block them rather than using a key cooldown like Twisted Advance. To summarize teamfighting, your job as Maokai support is to either lock on and engage onto key squishy targets or create space for your carries to output damage as safely as possible. Thank you so much for watching this Season 14 Maokai Support Guide. If you like this content, make sure to hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button too. It really, really does help. I really do wish that this Maokai support guide will help all of you reach a new level of gameplay in League of Legends. If you have any additional questions regarding Maokai support, please let me know in the comments below.